What's going on YouTube? My name is Alex. This is As The Cheese Gaming and welcome to the long-awaited Let's Play review of The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. What a truly special and amazing game this is. Let me just say right out of the gate, this game is absolutely a must-own on the console for the Nintendo 64. Easily top 10 on the console. I would say arguably even higher arguably top five depending on your preference and the style of games that you like you could probably even say a little bit higher than that uh, we got a silver key we got to get out here but first we got some wolf hosts we got to defeat let's take these guys out real quick come on buddy attack me oh no you're just gonna dance around me now goodbye Come on, buddy. Come on. This actually brings me up to one of the first points that I wanted to make about this game, which is the absolute flawless and fluid controls. Every button does something, whether it's the B button to control the sword, the Z targeting, R to lock it, whoops, R to lock onto an enemy or not. If you're moving around, like you see me moving around now with the joystick, Get this gold sculpty lie real quick. Now see we can Z target. There we go. Using the C buttons. No delay in the controls at all. Everything's smooth, flawless, which for an action adventure game is pretty important. You don't really want to be trying to move around and battle enemies and have their sit there and be a delay. So hey, we got ourselves a Silver key, we're gonna need that. It's been a while since I played this forest temple. Let's see if we can figure out where to go. There we go. Now this takes me to the second point. As soon as we take this guy out here. This game was made November 20th, 1998. Still a wonderful game, still receives good reviews. It was also remade twice. It was remade for the Master Quest on the Nintendo GameCube. And then was also ported to the 3DS and Ocarina of Time 3DS. So there are different ports of this out there. Let's see if we can get past this guy. Yeah, there we go. Goodbye. Uh, whoop, we didn't want to come here. Oopsies. Wrong door. <laughs> ah. Darn it, I got bumped. Oh well. It's just an absolutely awesome game. Handles so well, controls so well. I hope this is the door we have to go in. It's been a while. I'm not done thinking it might not be. Let's take him out and then we want to go up here. Take him out. And this does take me to the second, next element that I wanted to discuss. Just, just sit and listen, like, to this song, Dungeon's song for a minute. This game's just got awesome soundtrack throughout. I can't really think of a bad soundtrack in this whole entire game. The music for this game is absolutely wonderful. Easily top five, or, yeah, top ten. Arguably, same thing, top five for the console. Sound effects are great, whether it's the enemies or the weapons that you're using. They're smooth, they're responsive, you feel like you're doing something. I like these doors that I just opened. Get out of here, buddy. Go away. And we are going to go here. If I had to nitpick on maybe one issue of this game, I would probably say that its weakest area is its story. Hey, alright. I mean, 
it does have a unique story, but when you're talking about other games, like on the Nintendo 64 and just games in general, and even in the Zelda franchise, it's kind of weak, like, oh, okay, you know, kind of cool. You pull the sword from the stone, you become the hero of time, and then Zelda, and the final face-off with Ganon, or Ganondorf, or is he Ganon, or is he Ganondorf? separate video about that topic if you'd like it but it's like you know it's not a whole ton of a lot there besides oh, okay you got to go rescue the sages and before that as your kid you get the stones but it's just the overall atmosphere of the game it's just you know getting lost in this world and this universe of Hyrule when first start off you kind of feel like you can go anywhere do anything Let's get away from you. These amazing temples with their intricate levels and designs. Really good puzzles make you figure out you know, where you got to go and what you need to do. Like in this instance, you got the four boos. You know, see when you first come into this room, they're all gone. So you need to go and get the bow, hunt them all down. So it's got intricate puzzles. Not, I mean, aside from the water temple, it's not like mind wrenching where it's like, oh my god, like I'm never gonna figure this out. I think this goes back. Oops, oh my god, for real. I think I'm going back towards the front. I'm kind of walking around in circles here, but I'm just more trying to have a conversation with you guys. Hey, all right, cool. We found it. Nope, this was the where I needed to go. All right. Like I said, if I had one nitpick of this game, my major nitpick is that the core story is kind of weak, especially in regards to other Zelda games. But as I said before, it's got wonderful controls, wonderful music, awesome soundtrack, great usage of you know, weapons and items in each dungeon makes you, you know, make use of everything. Like so far, obviously equipped, I have the Ocarina. Oh, uh, wait a minute, I want to come here. I want to go back this way. And I have the Deku Nuts, which I'm probably not even going to use. But they're still there in case I need them. Ah, here we go. Get myself turned around. I'm so busy talking. But it's just a good, fun game. It's, it's just enjoyable to sit down and get really lost in the universe and try to figure out the puzzles and enjoy it. It's like, you know, there's a reason that this game still to this day has been so positively reviewed. And that you know, the Zelda franchise has been such a strong staple for Nintendo through all these years. And that at times other video game developers have tried to copy the formula. Such as like say with the Darksiders franchise which made Darksiders you know, 1, 2, 3. And then they made or de later decided to go with the uh, RTS game Darksiders Genesis. Which we can you know, maybe somewhere down the line I'll get a full review of that game. If you guys would be interested in Oh, it's speaking of, I think we're about to go and face the... There we go. Now we got ourselves a little mini boss here before we get onto the Poe sisters. Hey, all right. Oop, now we got two more. Trying to get under, I gotta get underneath the shield. There we go, got him. Ooh, a little bit of slowdown. I'm not sure that I've ever seen that before. Usually the frame rate in this game is very, very good, solid. Pixel design in the backgrounds, the detail. Attention to detail in the dungeon, the areas and the scenery. Oh, don't worry. Pretty sure I got a fairy here, don't I? Yep, getting a little aggressive here. <laughs> That was weird. Oh my god. Oh, that's crap. Why'd you stand back up, dude? Got him. Oh yeah, get that sidestep going. That's what's up. Now we get the hero's bow. Now we get to have some fun. Get a new item here. 
Which makes you, speaking of items, takes me to a new element here. Just the plethora of items that are in this game, such as when you start off with the slingshot as the kid, and the Deku sticks, and the Deku nuts, and then the Hylian shield, and then later on as an adult, obviously here we're getting the bow, we're in the forest temple as we speak. And then in the fire temple you get to use the hammer, get the long shot in the water temple. You get the boots in the shadow temple. And there's various puzzles that make you use those items again. You pretty well use the shield, the bow throughout the whole entire rest of the game. So it's kind of necessary to give it to you right out of the gate. So let's go and face the Poe, our first Poe sister real quick. Have some fun. What wonderful music this temple has. Oop, I waited too long. Darn it. That's one. All right, which... And now I think I gotta go up. Gotta hunt her down, then I get to face her. Ah, she poofed on me. If I get too close, she likes to vanish. Is she up there? Yes, she is. Come on, Poe sister. Come out so I can hit you. Where's she going now? Is she really going to hide behind the wall? Ugh, come on. That's how you're going to be for me today? That's what we're going to do? Maybe I can get her to come out and attack me. Let's try to go down here, see if we can get her pop out. Oh, there she is. Dave, maybe we could just stand right back here and have a little fun with her. There we go. So there's definitely a great usage of the items throughout the whole entire game. Which in some Zelda games, I've noticed that, you know, you get an item, you use it for that dungeon, then it never really makes it a return again. I think that's kind of, you know, pointless. I think it's more fun to make use of the uh, items throughout the whole game. Just makes you feel you know, happier that you got it. And it's more elements of, you know, each of the puzzles and the dungeons themselves. How many shots do you take? There we go. Yay! We got her. And we took out our first post sister. And I believe we, now we get a silver key. But if you don't own this game, it absolutely is a must own for the console. There's actually three different versions of this game on the console. There's the standard gray version, which you see me playing here. Then there's the Player's Choice, which I believe is version 1.02, which has a couple alterations to it. Uh, they changed the color of Ganondorf's blood, and they also took out the monks in the Fire Temple. So they altered the music for the Fire Temple, and I think there's one other minor change. I don't recall it off the top of my head. Please forgive me. And then, of course, there is the famous, or maybe infamous, Yo, gold copy, which I'm sure is just sky high in value, as of course Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are the toll two gold cartridges on the Nintendo 64. Ah, okay, we need another silver key, so we gotta go back through the door. And I believe with that Poe sister gone, that should have opened up another path for us to take. So let's head back out here and cut through. But Let's close out this review. Fantastic game, well worth playing, well worth collecting. As I said before, if I have one nitpick, it's maybe just the overall story. And if I really had to nitpick on this game, I guess once you master it, there's it's you know not a whole ton of replay value. I mean, if you've sat there and figured out every single dungeon, you know where to go, you know where all the items are, then it can get kind of boring. But I mean, that's kind of the premise behind playing the, uh, whoop, there he is. Ah, oh, and of course you moved on me. The Master Quest. But still, great game. One that I'm happy to have in my collection. Eventually I want to collect all three versions of it and have them in my personal collection. 
Hope you enjoyed this review slash let's play discussion. If you want to see more video styles like this where I just we just sit and have a talk while I play the game, candid conversation, because this game just feels too awesome to just do my short little brief overview review. This just this game's just too good. It feels like it deserves something more. So hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, like, comment, and share. If you're new here, I am Ask the Cheese Gaming. I primarily do Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 video game reviews. Hope you'll like this one. Thanks for watching. Till next time.